Okay, so let's talk about the nucleophilic acyl addition of nucleophiles that are not strong here. Thursday were strongly basic reagents like hydride reducing agents and organometallics. And those work by having that strongly basic nucleophile directly attack the carbonyl carbon. But when we're working with nucleophiles that are not strongly basic, that may be neutral, like water or an alcohol or an amine. Something like hydrazine, or the conjugate bases of really weak acid. Like cyanide ion, which is the conjugate base of HCN, which has a decay of tennage, or the peroxy acids. Peroxy acids are quite a bit stronger than carboxylic acids. The conjugate base of a peroxy acid, that, that acyl peroxide, is pretty weak. These are not really strong enough to add to the carbonyl carbon directly. So these reactions are often acid catalyzed. And the first step. So instead of the reaction starting by something negatively charged attacking the electrophilic carbon atom, the reaction starts by something positively charged being attacked by the carbonyl oxygen. So the simplest example. And the reason for overoxidation in the treatment of a primary alcohol with aqueous dichromate in present acid is hydration. Hydration is obviously the addition of water. And so the net reaction that we're talking about add water across the carbonyl oxygen, so there's an OH group attached to where the carbonyl carbon was, and a hydrogen. So this comes from an acid. And then the OH group comes from the water itself. So if we want to think about the mechanism of this reaction, which occurs when we have aqueous acid, the first step will be for the acid source to be attacked by the carbon oxygen. And that generates a resonance stabilized double cation. Better resonance structure is the one on the right that has the field octet, but the kind of active resonance structure is the one that has that positive charge on the carbon. Now we have a positively charged material that's much more readily attacked by even weak nuclear dialysis. So water will now attack that. And then step three will be deprotonation, 
regeneration of the acid catalyst. Anytime that you have a carbonyl compound, an aldehyde or a ketone, in the presence of aqueous acid, this reaction, this equilibrium is going to be occurring. The equilibrium constant for the reaction with an ordinary aldehyde is on the order of one. So in solution, you'll have about equal quantities of unreacted aldehyde molecule and the aldehyde hydrate. But that's not true for all carbonyl compounds. For a ketone, for example, KQ is around 10 to the minus 2, which means only about 1 in 100 molecules is the hydrate, and the rest of it exists as the unreacted carbonyl. So acetone is mostly acetone in solution in water, not the acetone hydrate. But for some of the other aldehydes, and if you're in the biological sciences, you're very familiar with the solution of formaldehyde. So for formaldehyde, the equilibrium constant for this hydrate formation lies strongly towards the hydrate. The hydrate is actually called formalin. And the equilibrium constant is around 10 to the third. Formaldehyde is actually a gas. And in aqueous solution, there is very little gaseous formaldehyde dissolved in there. It's not like dissolved oxygen or dissolved nitrogen. It mostly exists as the hydrate formula. And if you put an electron withdrawing group, Butanol. Butanol. It's the 
AL ended instead of AIE. And we don't need to specify one butanol because obviously the aldehyde can only be on the end. So if we take butanol, and instead of treating butanol with aqueous acid, we treat it with concentrated ACL, catalytic amounts, in the presence of methanol, we will get addition of methanol across bond. And this product that has an OH group and an OR group is called a hemiacetal. It's half an acetal. If we have two OH groups, it's a hydrate. If we have two OR groups, it's an acetal. If we have one OH and one OR group, it's a hemiacetal. HCl is a strong acid in the presence of methanol, just as it is in the presence of water, so it's completely dissociated. And what we actually have in solution is carbonated methanol and chloride. So what we have to work with are just carbonated methanol as our acid source and methanol. What do you imagine would be the first step in the mechanism? So exactly the same mechanism with a different proton shovel, basically. The methanol acts as the source of proton in its protonated form and as the base that's going to remove the proton at the end. Hydration and hemiacetal formation can actually occur in base as well.
So if instead of having methanol in the presence of ACL, we had methanol and methoxide ion, we could get to the same place. We would just get there by first attacking the carbonyl oxygen. Oxide ion, and then propagation of that oxide ion from the alcohol to generate the same. Notice that the base catalyzed mechanism has one fewer step than the acid catalyzed mechanism. That's actually pretty common. When you have reactions in base, they require fewer steps because there are less proton transfers. And it's reversible. It's completely reversible. In the presence of base, that's as far as you go. The hemiacetal is as far as you can get. But in the presence of acid, the hemiacetal continues to react. And the second kind of sequence is no longer an equilateral acyl addition. The second sequence of steps and that's even before steps is an equilateral alkyl substitute. And the product sugars like glycogen, and amylase, and amylopectin, and cellulose is actually an acetal linkage, where you've got two different sugars connected by that oxygen. So the question is, how do we get from the hemiacetal to the acetal under acid catalysis? And we can't get there under basic catalysis limited to just the nucleophilic gay solution. So we've got in solution the methyl oxonium ion and methanol and we've got the heavy acetal. It's gonna 
the hemi has the um, hydroxyl group. So the last step of hemi acetal formation was to take the proton off this oxygen. Certainly that can reverse, but there's no difference as far as this molecule is concerned. There's absolutely no difference between this oxygen and that oxygen. Both of those oxygens look like good candidates for protonation because they've got both pairs. So if we protonate the methoxide oxygen, we just go backwards towards the carbonyl compound. But if we protonate this one, and this is step four, right? We had three steps to get to the heavy acid power. So step four is to protonate that and we've just converted a shitty leaving group, hydroxide, which isn't going to leave in a nucleophilic alkyl substitution reaction, into a good leaving group, neutral water. And a really good leaving group because we've got an adjacent pair of electrons. that can stabilize that carbocation that's going to form. that's favorable. We no longer have a pi bond. We have two sigma bonds, carbon oxygen sigma bonds. We, we don't have a weak pi bond anymore. But from a perspective of entropy, this is not very good. This is three molecules of starting material becoming two molecules of product. So delta H is negative. It's exothermic. The delta S is also negative. Unfavorable. 
we can drive this reaction one way or the other by controlling the concentration of alcohol or the concentration of water. So the reaction is reversible. When the acetal is treated with HCS acid. Chatelier's principle tells us that if we have a high concentration of alcohol and a low concentration of water, the reaction will drive towards the acetal. If we have a high concentration of water and a low concentration of alcohol, we can reverse the reaction and push it towards the aldehyde. So for that reason, acetals can be used as protecting groups for the carbonyl function. If we want to do a strongly basic reaction like a Grignard reaction, that would otherwise react with the carbonyl to form an alcohol. We can form the acetal. Since the acetal is stable to base, right, we don't have to worry about the acetal reacting. Right, the hemiacetal would react very readily with base, but the acetal can't. There's no good leaving group on that. So by forming an acetal, we can render that carbonyl group unreactive in a future basic reaction. So the reverse reaction goes through all the same intermediates. The principle of microscopic reversibility tells us that the reverse reaction has to go through all the same intermediates as the forward reaction. And we can use that to then take that protecting group back off and regenerate the carbonyl carbon. It's not that favorable, though, to use an open chain alcohol like that, a mono alcohol, because of that entropy problem. We can improve the reaction in terms of using it as a protecting group by using a molecule that has the alcohol function Have both alcohol functions in the same model. And the reagent that's usually used for that is that being like that. So if we treat benzaldehyde, for example, with ethylene glycol in the presence of catalytic hydrogen ion. starting material become two molecules of product. So we don't any longer have this uh, unfavorable entropy. And this group here is a protecting group. For the carbon Are there questions on what I've presented?